Welcome everyone. Uh, very, very excited today because today is our last episode of the Explore series. And uh, believe me, we have saved the best for last. Uh, today is all about exploring conversations of media. And I must say that it is exciting to be here because I'm going to be having a conversation with none other than Nisha Narayan. So on behalf of Jagran Lake City University and Wiscroft Mine, I want to welcome Nisha. Well, Nisha has been a prominent name in the radio industry, and she's currently the CEO and director of 93.5 Red FM and Magic FM. She has been instrumental in launching Red Indies, which has featured uh, non-film music as part of Red on air content. And she has focused on creating brands out of absolutely raw content and talent. It was her vision to make Red FM accessible to its audiences across various touch points, which actually gave birth to the multiple IPRs under the AGs of Red FM. And I'm sure you've heard of all those successful IPRs like Red Live, Red Digital, Red Indies, among so many others. Well, during her tenure as Senior Vice President for Programming and Marketing, she also spearheaded setting up radio stations across markets in the country, making Red FM one of the largest radio networks with 68 stations. So some of the prestigious awards, and I, you know, I really like to uh, uh, state these awards because these awards are not so much about, oh, wow, she's an awarded person. It is more about how uh, much she has contributed. And I think awards is about value, and I'm sure you all agree with me. So she has uh, received the Dada, uh, Dada Sahib Falke International Film Festival Business Leader of the Year Award, the Don Rowlands Prize for Excellence, the most enterprising leaders of Asia, WR, uh, sorry, WCRC, the Impact 50 Most Influential Women's Award, and India's greatest CEO, India's greatest brand leaders, uh, brands and leaders. So um, uh, that is amazing. That was a mouthful. I fumbled a little bit over it, uh, yet never mind. I made it to the end of the list of awards, and I really thought that was important to read out. So uh, on behalf of all of us, thank you so much, Nisha, to be here. As you know, Explore is actually exploring various aspects of media and uh, providing the students with the opportunity to learn from the very best, to learn from those who have carved their niche in the field of media and entertainment. So on behalf of Wiscroft Mime and Jagran Lake City University, uh, together, I don't know if you know, we've set up the Jagran School of uh, Entertainment and Events. A big, warm welcome, Nisha. Thank you so much, Sushma. It's a, it's a pleasure being here, and and uh, I think that was a that was a very humbling introduction. <laughs> so I really don't know what to say to that, but thank you for the introduction, and I'm really happy and delighted. I'm looking forward to to interacting with the students here. Excellent. So let's begin. I've got a few questions here, and like I said, we're going to keep it interactive with the students. And those of you who have questions, please put in the chat box. Don't wait till the end of the session. I normally interview all the questions with, you know, uh, within the framework of my own. So Nisha, the first thing I want to know, well, actually, uh, you know, radio has changed. We know radio has changed. We have seen radio changing. It no longer remains radio in the traditional sense of the word. And this I'm saying specifically because my mom was a radio announcer back in 1950s, okay, on All India Radio. And uh, she was actually talking to me and interacting with me about, you know, the face of radio has completely changed. So I want to really get your input on what has happened, what has shifted, and why has it shifted? So, um, you know, if we, if, we, if we look at the journey of radio and when it started in All India Radio, that was All India Radio is close to about, I think, 95, 96 years old right now. Um, there was shortwave, there was medium wave. Uh, and, and that used to be the most prominent frequencies under which radio used to run. Um, after that, the journey happened when FM transmission came in. And then the la about, 20, about 19 to 20 years ago is when a lot of FM frequencies came in. So the moment FM frequencies came in, private channels came in, right? Uh, there was an auction. There were frequency bids that happened. And then a lot of private channels in terms of Radio Mirchi, Red FM, Big FM, Fever, all of these. Uh, channels bid and they got their frequencies. Now, uh, the journey as we stand today is that is that the world has gone digital. We are still on FM transmission. And how 
so the question really is and you know you do hear a lot of people saying that radio is perhaps not as fashionable anymore because digital is the way to go and things like that um there was there was in between about about 10 odd years ago there was satellite radio that came into india which was world space they didn't last very long there was there was a journey of about a couple of years there and and they had to uh, shut down their services maybe they started to to early this is a good time for satellite radio and digital radio to be a part of it um what what i'm really trying to say is that for 96 years all india radio has survived fm radio is around for the for the you know we've been around for the last 20 years and it is going to stay because we are talking to bharat fm talks to bharat it 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 reaches the hindi heartland it reaches places where no you know where no other medium reaches when there is a calamity when there are floods when there are multiple things happening what is the one source of either information or entertainment that you get it is only radio and multiple number of times be it be it in bhubaneswar where the cyclone strikes or hyderabad where cyclone strikes or bombay when the floods are happening what is what is happening all you have is the radio where people are saying mom i'm safe i'm at a place x you don't need to worry all right and that kind of an information so what did we do we shut playing the songs we didn't play any songs the only thing rjs like malishka and all were doing in the market of bombay was was to just connect families friends lovers girlfriends boyfriends all of them together to say look we're all safe so so that is the power today which no technical platform can deliver there is always a technical snag and there is always a technical uh, you know uh, downside to it which fm will deliver uh, regardless that is one second is the fact that india loves everything free radio is a free medium you can ca- you know you, you everything whether it is streaming radio whether it is whether it is digital radio you need the internet you need to pay a certain subscription you need to do everything radio is free of cost right and radio is available today in these in uh, on your mobile phones you can carry it it's a personalized medium and it talks to you as an individual so there is a huge huge merit to radio i think it is very i often say this in multiple platforms saying it's very fashionable to say you know print is nowhere in the picture radio is nowhere in the picture um, only digital and digital is the only thing it's very fashionable but honestly i'm just saying today even mr modi uses uh, you know radio for man ki baat and things like that you, you, it's a very very powerful medium if you want to reach the mass population of this country and and that is why it is very effective and it's here to stay yes the larger advertising pie may be shifted there will be a larger pie which may go to the digital stream of radio but radio will find other ways of 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 uh, surviving one and the last point i want to make and i don't want to make it sound like a monologue is the fact that radio is no more radio it's audio now so we are in the audio space and when you're talking about audio there's so much more that you can do so if you look at clubhouse you look at the spotify green room that uh, yeah I've, i've i've just downloaded it i've not been active on it but but if you look at the green room you look at twitter spaces what is all of that it's all radio podcast for instance it's all audio not radio sorry it's all audio so so the whole dynamics of radio is changing into the audio space and and it's only growing uh, right now and during the pandemic the radio listenership has grown uh, close to about 35 to 40% so which is very hot nick uh, in fact that's very interesting because you know earlier the perspective was that you listen to the radio in the car do you remember that i mean i'm not talking 1970s i'm talking about currently 90s 2000s but now since it's come all the way home i want to ask you you know there's this word that's flying around and it's called engagement uh yeah it's like uh, engagement viral content this these have become the buzzwords today so if you could give us a little bit of insight on how can we make how do you make because see i've seen a lot of red fm uh, i've seen literally i'm saying i've seen a lot of red fm so how does one make how have you made red fm engaging how have you made red fm visible and i have seen also the fact that your rjs today are out there not only uh, as rjs uh, being a part of content they have actually transcended content and they've got into really doing a lot of social good etc so you've created brands of the rjs 
So three questions roll into one. Uh, so it can kind of completely seamlessly flow and I don't need to keep interrupting you and uh, being the questioner, so to speak, in the hot seat. Let me ask the questions. No, so the journey of Red FM, I think one is that we do feel that when it's a very competitive space, and this is something for all the students that you should know, the, the, the back end of running a business of a radio station is there are huge license fees that you pay to run a radio station, right? right? So for instance, something like in Bombay, you'll pay something like 135 crores for a 15-year license. Similarly, all radio stations have paid that kind of money to be in markets. Now, when you pay huge amounts of money to get a license for 15 years, you're compelled to target an audience which is, which is a mass audience so that more advertisers start advertising on the radio. So therefore, everybody started playing the similar kind of music. All right. Yes. And then when everybody started, I mean, five years ago, when everybody started sounding exactly the same, then people said, no, Cholo, let's, some of them by, not by choice, but by force, they had to change their programming and their music. And then somebody became retro, somebody became English, somebody became maybe Marathi, somebody became CHR. Right now, when I say CHR, I'm sure you would know that, which is contemporary hit radio station in terms of new music. Now, I am also a strong believer of the fact that music is cannot be the only differentiator because, unfortunately, in radio, because of policies, we are not allowed news and current affairs, so we'll end up playing more music. But there's a lot of content that you can actually talk on radio, which can be extremely engaging. So it can be in the space of comedy, it can be in the space of information, it can be in the space of knowledge, and a listener should feel that when they're listening to the radio, they come out of the show feeling smarter because they've understood something or they've related to something. So we call ourselves a provocative entertainer in terms of our brand positioning. And therefore, the need to create superstars out of the RJs is very, very important. There are, I mean, I think, I think every company, every brand has a certain philosophy. I can speak for Red FM. And for Red FM, we truly feel that we would want to create Ronak. We would want to create Malishka. We would want to create Rishi Kapoor. We would want to create Karishma, say, for instance, in, in, in Bhopal. You know, um, RJ Mantra today is, is, a, is, a, is an ex of uh, Red FM or Jose or, or on MTV or Suresh Menon. They're all ex RJs of Red FM. And, and they started their journey with Red FM. They spent eight to 10 years uh, on the radio with us and then they moved on to other platforms but they all became larger than life and that is very important because I think the power of the medium is so strong that you can influence people a lot more it's not like news reading where you just read and you know you're just narrating the news when you become an influencer who's real who's not just uh, you know who, who, who's real you can you can see that person it also means that you have to speak things which are responsible and you're representing a media, so you need to speak something which is which is a which is which is more meaningful. So one point, Sushma, to answer your question, yes, we have as a policy tried to build our RJ. So whether it is Praveen in Calcutta, whether it is Devki in in uh, Gujarat or Malishka in Bombay, so we've tried creating a Malishka in every single city, and we continue that process every single day. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens with consistency. We do it every day. There is a whole large team of eight to 10 people who's actually focusing on that RJ, on their content, on campaigns that we can do and do it consistently to build that RJ. And we don't only use radio. We use radio, we use digital, and we also use on ground, right? So a multi-pronged approach, which is a 360 degree approach to build both Red FM as a brand and RJs as a brand is very, very important. And that's what we've done. So that's been, that's been the journey. Coming to the last point, which is, which is engagement. Um, radio is quick. So if you're on air and if you're saying something and saying, okay, so let me, let me give you, before I even say this, let me give you another example. Just about a week back, last Monday, we launched the audio film project. All right. So it is by Vikram Bhatt. Uh, he's narrating stories. So back then, we used to have in the olden days, or for that matter, if you look at America in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, when there was no television and stuff like that, radio was the main thing. And storytelling, so Sherlock Holmes or, or, or any of the detective series, etc., were all radio series, which were then later 
you know, which, which was converted into video formats and now it's on OTT platforms, etc. Or So it's the same concept of taking books and converting them into, into video. Similarly, um, some of the biggest heroes of, of, of the past back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s today, or The Shadows, for instance. I don't know how many of you would relate to that. They're very old series. Um, they're all converted into video series after they became super duper hits on, on radio. So the audio film project is where Vikram Bhatt is narrating stories on thriller or horror or mystery, and they work very well on radio. And you will imagine it, you'll visualize it on the radio. What are we doing to create engagement? Every single day, all the Hindi speaking markets. So we have about 45 Hindi speaking markets. Next day morning, we ask, Acha, Sia's sister uh, Simran is dead. And now Sia has come from Kanpur to hunt for her sister and figure out whether she is dead or who killed her and she's talking to the police. That's the storyline. So kisne mara? Should Sia put it out on social media? Is social media going to help her? So we we ask these kind of questions and trust me, the amount of calls we get every single day on the morning show across, whether it is Jabalpur, whether it is Kashmir, whether it is, uh, you know, Chandigarh, Amritsar, wherever. It's immense because we, we, we get a lot of people saying, nahi, social media mein nahi dalna chahiye, usko yaha karna chahiye, usko yaha jana chahiye. Everybody has such a strong opinion about it. That's engagement. Right. And engagement necessarily doesn't have to be restricted on the radio, but it can be also on the digital platform. And I keep saying that today, the way the ecosystem has changed, we have to have a multi pronged approach of radio, digital and on ground because of the pandemic. We've not been able to do too many on ground. So so it's digital and radio. And you should keep asking questions about the content that you deliver. The more you do that, the more response you'll get. We created Baua. I don't know, some of you from the North would, 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 would be familiar with Baua. You know, uh, it took a lot of practice and a lot of effort to create a Baua. Once it became popular, people will automatically call you up and say, you know, Baua bola hai. you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So you would ask people saying that, do you want to be having a conversation with Baua? Initially, when we started with Baua, people asked, Ye Baua hai kon? I mean, what is this? you know, irritating voice and this guy who's really making mockery of, of somebody from maybe MP or something like that, this little kid. Why should we even talk to him? And also there was consistent effort to build Bawa into a brand or a Mawali Bai into a brand. You know, so these are references and you can do that only through engagement. And always remember the power of radio or audio medium is the power of regional. I'm a very, very strong believer of regional. Today, and, and even for that matter, a lot of digital content creators, I think, should focus on regional content because everything is in Hindi, everything is in English, right? People are sick and tired of hearing the same thing because you know what is going to come next. But when you take up regional content and regional ethos, regional flavor, it could be a few words. It doesn't have to be the whole, uh, the entire thing has to be in Gujarati or Bengali or Kashmiri where you don't understand a word. It could be largely Hindi, but it can have flavors, at least 20 to 30 percent of regional flavor. It would be so popular because and it is not just that a Gujarati will only like the Gujarati content. People who are starved for fresh content and new content would want to see Acha Gujarat mein kya ho Acha Kashmir mein kya ho So you have to deliver that. And, I, I, and we've seen it over the last three to four years the kind of uh, response that regional uh, spaces have grown. And we, I mean, uh, tomorrow, 1st of August, we are launching the South Side Story season three. What is South Side Story? It is all about South Indian music. It is about South Indian artists. It is about independent music um, only and only and only originals. And who are we doing it for? We are not organizing it in South of India. In fact, the first year when we did it as an on-ground event in Delhi and Bombay, it was a huge hit. I had a lot of people asking me, saying, Aap South Side Story North mein kyo kar rahe ho? Aap Bangalore mein kije na? Aap Chennai mein kije? I said, I don't want to do that. They anyway have enough and more festivals there. And the idea to say that you can get bands and South Indian music to the North and those who want to experience that is what we were talking about. We even gave them the experience of, of the sadhya, which is the banana leaf. And, you know, you're having all of those 2024 20, dishes. So people who came in, they had their lunch. Uh, on the banana leaf, on the day of South Side Story, and then witness the music, etc. So experiences are something that you need to provide, and you can give better experiences if you also focus on regional. So that's how you build 
engagement. These are all conversations and oral narratives that constantly needs to be spoken. And the key word or the operative word is being constant. It's not about one great right. idea and you just did it. You, know, you just need to keep repeating it again and again. And evolve. And evolve. And evolve. And evolve. Correct. Absolutely. Excellent. I, I, I love to talk. I mean, you're talking about the film uh, part. I must tell you, I know I'm going a lot into flashback of 1950s. But mom used to tell me that they used to do theater on radio. As in, they were reading scripts and... Uh, and in a lot of ways, I really feel uh, mm-hmm. engagement has really taken us back to the origin in some form or the other of where we started. Because I think that since radio was the only uh, available medium at that time, engagement was extremely high. I think, you know, I don't know, uh, in my, my two and a half bit in this. I, I want to also ask you, like you were talking about South Side Story, you've been talking about IPs. So uh, what I have seen over my career for past 30 years is I remember when we used to do events, uh, uh, Nisha, like I did Deep Purple, right? So at that point of time, when we used to do concerts, etc., all we worried about are radio spots. <laughs> you know, like, okay, this is going to be a radio spots and radio contests. That was all that our domain or our area was. Now we've gone way beyond, way, way beyond. Now I can see a lot of the IPs that you build are actually collaborating or brands are collaborating with the IPs. So if you could give us a little bit of input and us, especially for our radio students is because I'm sure they want to understand how the uh, marketing dynamics also work with IPs. So if you could give us a little input, number one, of course, why IP is because uh, it's making a statement, it's going out there, it's giving the listeners what they want, it's creating a community, get back. How do the IPs develop? How do you actually create those IPs? And number two, how do you make those IPs viable for brands to associate with it? Okay, so uh, we've, 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 we've got about at least 20 odd IPs uh, as, as Red FM as a network. And some of them have been 10 years old. Some of them have been more than 10 years old. Some are like the subject story, three years old. How do we create the IP, identify the need gap? Look, I think if you, if you, if you say that, look, this is what we want to do where you have one kind of a festival which you organize which is for all a one size fits all from the old to the young to everybody we want to cater one festival to everybody that is not going to work right. you need to identify spaces which are more community led which are more stronger which are more niche and then you start uh, working on those IPs. so just to give you an example some of the IPs that we've done um, the south side story is on the south there's something called the Rider Music Festival, which is with super bikes. So it's everything related to bikes and, and the experience of bikes. So I may be wearing a sari. I'm, pro, I'm not a bike person at all. I can't drive. But uh, I would love to explore as it what is in it there when you go and experience um, a bike. So AI-led um, experiences that you can give to people who probably don't, don't ride bikes, etc. So that's on the bike space. Or folk music, different parts of uh, the country has such rich traditions of folk. So we take folk music, we bring it into a festival and bring in aspiration into the IP. Folk doesn't mean it's always village-like or it is very down market or it is, it is, it is okay, okay and too traditional. No, there is such cool stuff which is made. And folk, when, and when done with fusion, is even, even better because the instrumentation and the arrangement, you know, changes the whole landscape of that music. So we've been doing a lot of, like, we call it the Yellow Taxi Music Project, which is a folk festival. Uh, the Riders Music Festival is the Superbikes or the South Side Story, just a couple of examples here. Or the Audio Film Project is an IP in itself. It's an audio IP. How do you, how do you uh, scale the IP? That's the next question, which is how do you scale the IP year on year? What would be the natural progression of something, say, like the audio film project? We should go into the video film project. We should take them, which is the web series and audio, convert it onto a video film project and put it out as web series on the OTT platform right? How do you create those, those kind of engagements? We get Vikram Bhatt to go to 20 cities and we get him to narrate stories in closed door audiences with closed door audiences and we have storytelling sessions. The joy of it, right, uh, is, is what we need to create. So that is every single level, every year we sort of scale up. What is the next level? Another level that you can add to the audio film project is instead of only Vikram narrating the story, you actually have stars. You have Nawazuddin Siddiqui, you have Meena Gupta, you have other artists 
who also lend their voice and it's actually creating drama. So these are progressions that you do in terms of how you develop the IP. And then comes the last question, which is that of, of marketing and associating with brands. Brands are, you know, they are hungry for content like this. They need integrations. Today, the brand never looks at any radio station or any print or anybody to say, chalo FCT baja do, ads baja do, right? They need to see a lot more. And what is it that they seek? They want brand integrations, product integrations, product placements, etc. So when say in the audio film project, I don't know if some of you have heard it, but if you if you listen to it, you'll have Vikram saying that Sia wo Safed Wali Honda City se utri. Or Sabdajanki police station chali gai. These are these subtle, you know, I of course can't narrate and my Hindi is not as good, but but I'm just saying that the kind of um, uh, placements that brands want are things like this. They want, they want integrations. And that is what we need to create both in the audio space, both in the in the in the video space, as well as on ground. So when we're doing an on-ground as well, brands want lounge. They want to create lounges. They don't want to just have their logo put behind in, on the stage. They want to create experiential lounges where you can go, you can sit and, you know, where, where experiences can be provided. So the whole dynamics of the media and entertainment industry today as an entertainment industry, I think is changing into more experiential content and experiences in the form of audio, in the form of video, in the form of uh, uh, um, on-ground. So if you're able to integrate brands seamlessly where, the, where it doesn't look a force fit, brands would lap it up. And that's, that's, that's the creative part of it. In fact, you'll also have a lot of people who'll say, Nahi, humko, we don't want to integrate it because it will spoil the, um, uh, the flavor. I don't know. I'm saying after a few seasons, if Mahindra sponsors and says, Chalo, drop the Honda city, but then let's go in for the Mahindra Thar. You'll very well hear Vikram saying that, you know, and then see a Mahindra Thar si utri and then went to the police station. You never know. So, so I think those little challenges do come in and he may have an objection in terms of the creative um, route that he may take and the Mahindra may not really, you know, visually appeal to the character yeah. that is there. So we'll have to integrate it very seamlessly so that it doesn't look, look uh, too post fit. But otherwise, today, brands are looking for uh, Sushma all over experiences and, and, and integrations and innovative uh, ideas. I mean, they, they don't want simple advertising. So this, the, the whole concept of advertising driven models today, I think, ceases to exist. The pandemic has made it even more challenging for all of us to survive, to say that, OK, we need even bigger ideas to attract the brands to come and spend on radio, audio and video. And that's what the team is constantly doing. Actually answered my next question, which was about integrated media. So what I really get is the fact that IPs are not created in isolation. It's created in uh, understanding number one, what is it, what the, the listeners require or what will excite them or what will disrupt, uh, hmm. uh, disrupt uh, the current scenario. Number two is what I mean, what do the brands need and then you marry them, but you don't look at only radio as being the only media, you will look at how do we integrate all the other media to enable the experience of the IP being driven. Yeah, that's Absolutely. like Absolutely. encapsulating it. Okay, excellent. So now next question, and then we are going to throw the floor open because there are quite a few questions from our students. I have one, a couple of more questions. Guys, hold on, okay. Uh, community building. Anisha, I really do not want you to leave here without us knowing uh, possibly your tip, I don't like to use this word, but you know, your tips and tricks. <laughs> possibly, what, is, what are your secrets? Because you've managed to build quite a, quite a number of communities. And there has been also communities for number one, let me say, social and political voice. Uh, 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 just citing a very simple example of uh, Malishka doing that song about the uh, rains in uh, India and the, uh, in Bombay and the floods, right? Uh, you've also built communities for social good. So could you give our students a couple of uh, techniques, possibly a few secrets, share a few secrets of how communities are really built? When you say communities, you're talking about uh, social initiatives? Yes, social initiatives, yeah. social initiative communities. Yeah, so, so, okay. for okay. social good, social voice, social uh, perspectives, etc. Okay, 
So the joy of FM is that it is FM. What does it mean? FM means it's local in nature. All right. So the problems that concern the guy sitting in Aizwal where we are present in is very different from the guy sitting in Gangtok to 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 a Jabalpur to an Amritsar, etc. And each city has its own concerns, own problems. In one city, it may be eve teasing, which may be a bigger problem. In another city, garbage and pollution may be the biggest problem. There are multiple problems everywhere, no doubt about it. But I'm just saying, if we can identify as a local station, we understand the pulse of the city. And if we can identify the top five issues of that city. You take any one of those topics and then you create a, uh, a conversation. That is the genesis of the whole thought of, of building communities. I, uh, you know, one of the, uh, because Pinky said she's based out of Bhopal, so I'm giving Bhopal as an example. And we, do, we keep doing many things in multiple cities. So we, we've done something called Kabad Si Jugad. There was this whole drive of plastic and, you know, say no to plastic, et cetera, et cetera. What did we do? We requested the chief minister to come in and say that, okay, fine. I've got a lot of scrap material. Um, and, and one of it being my old fan, which is what the chief minister back then said. And he donated it saying, this is my scrap. I'm giving it and saying, let us put it all to good use. We mobilized the city to come and give their crap. And what we, scrap, sorry. And what we, what we built was, a whole, what we got was a whole bunch of metal and iron and, and so much of scrap and, you know, uh, computer spare parts, this spare parts, car spare parts, a lot of things that, that you know, is junk. What did we do out of that? We, we got an installator and we created this huge radio set right in the middle of one of the, uh, one of the key intersections in Bhopal using all of the scrap. All right. And it's a radio set. And, 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 and everybody who passes by, of course, there's a little bit of branding of where I'm from on the side, but, uh, which we do. But, but other than that, I think the joy of taking it and doing something slightly meaningful. See, we cannot change the world as a radio station. But what we can do is to make people aware, right? I, I, you can make somebody smarter. You can, you can share knowledge. You can build a certain intellect. And I also feel all RJs should have a certain voice. They have to stand up for something. Could be animal rights, could be, could be education for children. There is so much that we can do because the reason, you know, it is a myth that commercial radio doesn't, doesn't um, support social causes. Back then, so uh, tomorrow, what, I complete uh, 16 years uh, in Red FM and, and uh, you know, a lot more close to about 30 years now in the field of media and entertainment. First August is when I started my career, my journey. Back then when I joined uh, Red FM, we used to set up these radio stations. So at that time, I didn't know what radio was or what FM was. So I remember when we were setting it up in Bhuvaneshwar. Nobody knew what it was. And they all said, you don't do social stuff. So NACO approached us and said, look, we wanted to promote use of condoms. And, and, and uh, we have a half an hour program on All India Radio. And, but what is it that private FM can do? <laughs> we, you, you know, you guys are always about music and fun. And, you know, you can't be giving in interesting content. You can't really educate. So we decided we'll have a cricket match. Cricket match between the, the, the celebrities of Orissa versus our RGs and listeners. And we, you know, there was a whole one month of, of uh, shortlisting the teams, etc. And people who ever wanted to come and play, etc. And the testing. And then in the stadium, on the day of the match, whatever, whoever the number of audiences were there, we were distributing condom packets and we were giving social messages, right? There are, and, and trust me, the government loved it. I mean, Mako guys loved it. So there are ways of doing it. Not every social, social uh, messaging doesn't mean it has to be boring or doesn't mean it has to be in the space of activism. It is about first getting people to even, even think differently. Saying no to plus. It's a lifestyle change that you do because it's it's not a one-off campaign that you do. You have to do it more consistently. So the so the idea is to take up a topic which is which is relevant for that city. One. Two, uh, get in bigger partners. So for instance, if we are if we are talking about uh, so in, in Bombay, we do something called Bajao for a cause multiple times where we we collect donations for for let's say blind children to to collect to buy more braille sets for them and things like that. Now, if you're doing something like this, we'll collaborate with multiple organizations, media houses, et cetera, and make it larger than life. And then we, for, for three weeks, the only thing we talk about is Bajau for a cause, whether it is on midday meals, whether it is on blind children, whether it is on education for children of sex workers, whatever it is. 
right and these are these are and there are such strong stories that come out there don't just give gyan in terms of you know you should contribute you should do this personalize it give testimonials talk about inspiring stories right talk about one child who got who benefited from whatever you have contributed and he is giving his own life story there that is inspirational and that is the space you really need to get into don't you know a lot of people just give gyan that you should contribute this you should do this in order to plus what does it really mean save the tiger what am i supposed to do how do i save a tiger you know all i know is home and office and back what am i really supposed to do so if you don't give a call to action and if you don't personalize it you say that okay fine here's this tiger whom we saved all right she was dying and we saved and and she was she was going to be poached and this is what we did thank you for the support the moment you do that the kind of response goes and grows multifold so social wow. initiatives and social content is a very very strong component of your content never forget that no matter how entertaining it is you have to be meaningful you have to be relevant and that is the only way you last that long it's very easy to be an rj still but it is most difficult to continue being an rj and being number 1 consistently for 10 years 12 years 15 years and how do you do that the only way to do that is to talk things which are relevant which connects with people which are very high on emotional quotient or eq these are real life stories whom you're taking and you're bringing up to the fore you are being the voice for those people and saying here's a here's a person and we we managed humbly to make a difference in his life that's the space and as long as you're aware of it and you're cognizant of it i'm sure you'll do well on that thank you so much uh i'll give me one more uh, you know the uh, saturday uh, morning and yeah. people are moving in and out in and out okay give me a, a i have a couple of questions here so i'm going to start taking these questions because i don't want to leave our students um, hanging in the air so aman the Uh, has asked a uh, content he is a content writer at uh, lake city voice a uh, red fm is one of his favorite radio channels in india his question is what are the different roles in radio apart from the rj and i've taken this question first first of all is the first question and it is something that you and i discussed as well so just bang on for us to get into the careers in radio segment so if you could please share what are the different roles in radio besides being an rj I mean I you know I, as somebody who's running a business I would say that the pillars of of a radio channel are the back end teams okay who really run it the RJ gets the amount of support the 8 to 10 people who who work behind making the RJ successful are copywriters sound engineers music managers producers assistant producers ob jocks then they'll have a programming head all of whom will sit on them and 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 work on it besides this is at the programming level besides that you have an entire sales team you have an entire marketing team you have an entire design team today we have an entire digital team which is sitting and taking whatever the content is which is on air we want to reflect it on digital as well so you cut paste and quickly put it out on the on on both the rg social media profile as well as as well as um, the red fm profile so there's an army of people in these different categories also finance accounts like any other businesses you know it's a full fledged business a marketing department also is not just another marketing department within the marketing department there is there are there is a separate team of copywriting for programming which is creative programming and on air there's a separate copywriting team for marketing there is a separate design team for marketing there is trade and communication a b2b marketing which is there then there is a b2c marketing which needs to be handled so within the marketing there are multiple multiple things right um even a music research for instance or a music manager who's there not every song goes up on air without any research we 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 do dmt test digital music testing as we as you call it um or some people do it as amt which are analog music testing right which is which is which is more manual and we test the songs the popularity of the songs and only the super hit songs are put out there so there's a lot of hard work that actually goes it's not just fun and games that that is shown it's not just pure hasi mazak or comedy as it sometimes is reflected on the airwaves there's a lot of fight tears um you know and and a lot of fight i can assure you for that i'm <laughs> saying which goes be- between departments between thought processes so so 
radio gives you um i think multiple opportunities other than that as as a jo- uh, as an rj as a job uh, career opportunities are quite a few behind um the airwaves and i think one must explore that as well and it's more fun to do that because the pressures of the rj is a little more than you know the pressures that you'll have as a back end team because you don't have to front it but but having said that it's fun it's a lot of fun it's a lot of hard work but but uh, worth it uh excellent now there are quite a few questions about how do we look for opportunities in red fm uh yet let me give a little bit of a macro twist to it so what do you look at what is red fm look at when you're hiring a team i think that will give a little bit more uh insight to you know how can our students be uh standing out from the clutter um and actually uh, become hand picked students for red fm in the future so in general every single person mm-hmm. if i i usually meet every single employee that we hire even if it is a junior person i try and make an effort to meet no matter which part of the country they're from um the first thing i look for sushma is passion you know i don't i personally am against cookie cutter style of programming and thought processes i like i out of the box thinking i love uh, thoughts which challenge my own thoughts i could have i'm we encourage people to say that look there's a, many a time i may have an idea which i think we should probably execute and my team would come and say no i don't think that's a good idea i think we have a better idea than that and this is it i love that you know so i yeah. think that for that can only happen if you're passionate so the first thing i look for is passion the second thing i look for is people to be aware of what is happening around your city country etc that's very very important because your listener is a very smart fellow don't ever underestimate your listener so he is very very smart he may be reading books he's probably aware he's probably digitally aware as to what's happening he reads the news etc so if you need to entertain him you need to be knowledgeable you need to be intelligent and you need to be aware of what is happening so read your newspapers read some books be aware of what is happening be clued into what are the new things who's the latest like for instance uh, you know if 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 um, if i talk to any of the youngsters who we recently hired the first thing they'll come to me and say why don't we do a concert with ami ami bhai bantai right they'll probably not say let's do it with ani singh or somebody they'll probably want to want to tell me okay or oh, let's let's get into the k pop series and do something on k pop because that's the yeah. big thing so insights what is the trend what is what is it that the youth or our listeners are really enjoying the youngsters are really enjoying i think an insight to that is very important and then that can happen only if you're aware of what is happening so i constantly look for that um and and so if you're looking you know it's a media job so if you're looking for something which is really a 9 to 5 it will not be a 9 to 5 job yeah right this will take away your life <laughs> this will take away your life and for me this never started as a career for me and i say that it was a hobby which turned into a career i just went with the flow and nothing else so therefore i don't feel that i'm working so you're constantly working so even on a sunday i'm working and i'm doing calls and thinking chalo let's do this let's do that etc why because you don't feel that it is a career so follow your passion be aware of what is happening around and be confident don't and be yourself don't copy anybody i think the moment i i often reject people who copy others i don't want anybody to come in and say that you know i can be another bower and he copies a bower you create something of your own and if you see that we will we will make you a ronak or a bower or or a malishka that's our responsibility but don't copy others because you know there's so much of there's so much of talent within you all you need to know is to you know understand what you have or understand the talent that you have but if you keep copying others or keep emulating others you'll not be able to sustain it you can copy only that much you can copy somebody and go on air for a month for two for three after that you you know you'll not be able to sound like the other person so you have to be yourself so identify your strengths and let's let's kind of work on making that a lot more sharper so the moment i recognize these and my meetings are you know mostly 5 minute interviews but but we get to know these in in these 5 minutes that's it that's it it doesn't have to be a good voice or a voice with great grains it doesn't have to be you you just need to be real what we need are real people who can be the voice out there and still entertain oh, so originality and authenticity Absolutely. basically uh, is the critical uh, i think it's a cornerstone for any job in media not only radio <laughs> i mean any job in media 
Uh, well, um, uh, this, uh, so uh, if uh, they want to uh, approach Red FM uh, later, uh, I know I'm getting a lot of questions. Uh, we'll, we'll cover that as the last question. Okay, till then, I'm going to take a few more other uh, questions. Uh, I'm a channel producer and music manager at Lake, uh, Lake City Voice. What are opportunities for me in radio? So uh, in, what uh, producer, channel producer? Channel producer and music manager. And the music, so, so much of it. I'm just saying that today uh, on the music front, you should understand the pulse of where music industry is heading. All right. So at one point, all of us were playing, all of us as in all radio stations were playing Bollywood music. In the last three years, I, I can and I can speak for Red FM, we've been really pushing the independent music scenario. Yeah. The, the, so we are, for example, we're the only radio station in Dehradun. All right. And when we visit Dehradun, the kind of Bahari music which is there, the lilt in the voice is brilliant. They don't get opportunities where they can showcase that music on the airwaves. What are they seeking? They're seeking mainstream media like us to come and give them a platform. So music managers need to understand the pulse of the music, the way the industry is changing, identifying good voices. You should understand how music testing is done. All right. And once you're a great music manager, honestly speaking, whether it is on digital radio, whether it is on audio, whether it is on television, you'll be valued tremendously. It doesn't always only have to be radio because you, you're a music expert. You understand music. Absolutely. That is a space that you need to work towards. And when you talk about the producer part of it, again, knowing and being aware of what is happening around the city is very, very critical. That is when you become a good producer. And remember one more thing, which I always tell every producer and every single team member is the the beauty is in the details. While it sounds very cliche, but the beauty is in the detail. So, so suppose, for instance, um, you know, IPL is starting back again, right? Why suppose? 19 September, IPL is starting again. All radio stations, everybody's going to say the same thing. How is it going to be different? So the beauty is in the detail of how you deliver that, the kind of twist you make in the line, the kind of approach or the kind of take that you have on that content, which makes you stand out. So you need to get into the detailing of it. Don't look at things at a macro level. And I do feel that there is a certain, um, uh, you know, it's probably very easy to for youngsters to say, huh, you know, I've done a superficial look at it. I can speak anything. Yes. But remember that if you really want to create a mark and be popular and, and be consistent and be known for your work, remember that the beauty is in the detail. The moment you get and read between the fine lines, in whichever field, whether it is a marketing, whether it's arging, whether it is copywriting, whether it is the idea itself, layers of idea. Don't just get into one single idea. If it is one big idea, which is, let's say, for instance, the audio film project now for us, what are the layers uh, uh, in it? So, so how do we create engagement? How do we get people to be more active? How do we bring the listeners? How do we give listeners more access to Vikram Bhatt? All right. Is thriller the only genre? Should we get into horror as well? Horror be science fiction ka horror or realistic horror where we start relating ourselves to those characters, etc. Do we make it into a video? Multiple layers of questions that you ask yourself and you get into those answers and then you develop the idea. So, so what I'm still coming back to is the fact that it is in the detailing. Once you get into the detail, then all you need to do is to execute it to the T. Right. So, so these are things which I think will only help um, a producer, music manager, and any other position. I think this is a generic question for all, but, but these are things that you need, you need to be more mindful about. Excellent. Thank you. I, I love the way you're really detailing it out. So appreciate that. Uh, uh, another question, which I think is quite relevant. Uh, if you could, uh, I think it's Amandeep who has asked this. Ma'am, another question is we're going through a COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, when lockdown was imposed in India. So what were the different challenges faced by radio and how did the radio industry overcome it? Um, we've not overcome it. We're still there. So we're still struggling. Uh, Aman. Uh, the, the, um, so we, as Red FM, we've got multiple touch points. As I said, we've had a 360 degree approach. So therefore, it's not just audio for us. We've been doing a lot of on-ground festivals, events, etc., as well as digital. We've had to take a lot of our uh, on-ground events as digital IPs. So Southside Story, for instance, which we're announcing tomorrow, is a digital IP. 
all right uh, it is so so earlier it was only bombay and delhi which was on ground events so now we taken it on a digital ip what did we do we created a lot more digital ips in terms of how are we coping with it um uh, let's say for instance we wanted we've been we did an on ground event in maharashtra called the marathi film festival we had a lot of well known marathi stars who were part of it etc this time we took it online um we 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 did something called the kavi collective which is on spoken word again uh, where we had old kavi like um ashok chakradhar and sunil jogi dr sunil jogi and we had young guys like priya malik and all all of whom we put them all on the same stage and then we put it out as a digital ip so how are we coping from a business point of view how are we still giving experiences to the listener is through digital ip right and creating stronger content more gripping content so so audio film project is an effort towards that um otherwise i think as as a uh, and that's what the industry is doing at a at a back end level i think if you are kept busy doing all these ips and doing all these shows together then there is no space for for brooding or 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 feeling left out or you're keeping yourself very very busy and you ensure that your mental health is all right and and because you're driven because you want to do newer stuff and that's how the industry is coping and i'm sure all other industries are also doing the same thing at a hr level uh thank you uh, uh nisha i'm going to club a couple of questions because there are many and then uh, uh, otherwise we'll end up running over time um ravi has asked this question how does he uh, your suggestion about controlling his nerves before anchoring or hosting a show uh which would be a new show and uh, taiba has said uh, um sorry can i just Taiba, Sushma, sorry this is my suggestion on hosting a show Uh, controlling the control nerves. nerves how to control nerves if you could say then i'll go on to the next subject and get too confusing i i'm a firm believer of meditation and i think all you need to do is to just get into your own space of um of sorry sushma did you say something no yeah so i'm saying i'm a firm believer of okay yeah i'm a firm believer of meditation and i think it's very very important um multiple number of times every time just before the aj goes on air there's enough and more chaos he must have just come out of a fight or there must be you know a big argument which has happened but when you go out there on stage you need to be more composed and the only way to do it is not just meditating a minute before you go on air but using meditation as a tool to deep breathe and it doesn't have to be meditation i'm talking about deep breathing as a tool to to calm yourself to be together you can be broken but you can be together right and and that is what you do so i think that is extremely important and be very focused just before your show is don't get into other conversations and stuff like that get into a space where you are preparing it mentally to to speak to a much larger audience that's it i mean i the more you encourage other conversations and kabhi you know before before you go for your show you went for a cup of tea maha koi kuch gossip sun liya kuch aur sun liya that is disturbing you don't get into all of that and do not be hyper that's it be confident get into the zone so to speak <laughs> okay taiba taiba is asked uh, uh, taiba praveen of copywriter from lake city voice we are uh, living in a developing era and changes are inevitable what are the things that are still the same despite the continuous changes as a writer how can i adapt so that i can cope with this ever changing world interesting creative question if you are a writer you're here to stay praveen um i mean i i we said this thing 1930s 40s and 50s when america saw radio the theater what was theater it was all about storytelling so once a storyteller always a storyteller right so so if you're good at story and if you're good at story writing um uh, you may need to adapt in terms of the scenes till earlier you would probably say he took the radio set and he heard it on the radio now that radio you may replace it with the twitter he read it on the twitter you know so so those things may change but storytelling is here to stay that will never go away no remember one thing about about this is to all the people who do creative writing is that no matter what the platform they're all technological platforms content continues to be the king i have multiple arguments at technical forums where i go and say content is king and all the technical experts say aisa kuch nahi hai platform 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 
Well, platform is there, but what is a platform without good content, right? So, Praveen, you continue writing your stories, you continue narrating beautiful stories, and regardless of whether it is on, on um, radio, audio, uh, OTT platforms, it can be a film, whatever it is, how does it matter? The story is the most powerful. A film is only as good as its story, right? Audio film project is only as good as its story, regardless of Vikram Bhatt or Red FM. No, it's the story that is gripping. And therefore, I think I think you're the only one where I feel if you're a writer, if you're a creative person, if you're a content person, nobody, I mean, your platforms may change. It doesn't matter, but you're there. Constantly going on mute because uh, there's so much activity and uh, traffic in my living room right now. Okay, uh, we <laughs> we have uh, one more question, and um, that is, uh, I'm, this will this will be our last question, everyone, and uh, then we will wrap up. Uh, I, I think you've already answered it. I'll still ask it. It has always been seen in radio or broadcast industry per se that most creative concepts that follow are simple and general pattern have a high recall value and new students who come uh, take refuge behind the scene. So then it becomes a daily pattern and the quality of creativity comes to a standstill. What is the best route to avoid this approach and yet be able to convince the brand not to actually follow the race and do something different? So uh, uh, how do we actually use, uh, sim uh, very simply put, how do we actually infuse disruptive ideas in a well-oiled machine of something that's already working? So, firstly, the first idea that comes to your mind should always be the last idea you should execute. Because the first idea that we come up with is something which many people will come up with. That's probably the low-hanging fruit. Because it's, 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 it, it's something that naturally will come. But I always feel that the idea that comes as the fourth or the fifth idea, where you struggle to think of an idea sometimes, and you probably uh, start that idea by saying, look, I have a really bad idea, but I think, why don't we do this? Sometimes those are the ideas which are the most difficult to execute as well, and which you wouldn't think of really doing it, which, which become disruptive ideas. So don't go for the first idea that, that comes to you immediately because I often feel that that is a very common idea that will not set you apart from another um, idea. But if you want to kind of really challenge and be disruptive, think of ideas which others have not done. It may be difficult to do because it's not been done before, but that is where disruption, I mean, the, the, that's where disruption starts and you'll have to start thinking like that. Did I, was I able to answer that question? Absolutely, yes. And I think a lot of uh, uh, ideas are developed. Uh, usually the ones we run with is usually the fourth or fifth idea, uh, because that's when you actually the trend of thought happens. And I, I, I also really believe that uh, the more you discuss the idea with the team, uh, that there is more infusion and there's so many different perspectives that come into making the idea real and harnessing it and making it relevant for other people. So I think, uh, yes, so I think very well said. Yes. Teamwork is also equally important because this, the, most of the creative heads today, I, I think initially when they join us, hum idea leke aayenge. So it's always hum, hum, hum and mera idea and they're so possessive about your ideas, etc. Don't be so possessive about your idea. When you sit in a group of four or five, it doesn't have to be an army of people, but when you sit with a smaller group, you know, and you let it flow, you, you allow people to criticize your idea as well. That allows you also to challenge your own thought process and say, Chalo, it's the same idea. The nucleus of the idea remains the same, but the way it's approached is slightly different because you have other people who's also giving you thought processes. So do that. And I think if you are less possessive about an idea, you can develop it a lot more better. And I think teamwork works. I mean, in any industry, in any space, uh, the, the more you speak to people, you get more ideas. It should be about... It, it cannot, great ideas don't come inside a drawing room or a study table and say, Chalo, idea like no, it's out there when you're shaking hands, kissing babies on the streets, eating golgappas or, you know, dancing in the rain or whatever. I'm saying that is when great ideas come in it, 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 and teamwork. So, so, um, so be open to ideas, be open to criticism. And I think you'll, you'll come up with the best ideas then. Thank you so much, Nisha. Now the, uh, the pivotal question, which has been buzzing on this chat, and that is, uh, ma'am, if we would want to join Red FM, how could we do that? 
And <laughs> what is <laughs> that? That I, if I don't ask that question, I'm I'm telling you, I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail. <laughs> no, no. I I think um, what I can do is to share the details with my HR details with Sushma. And um, Sushma, if you can just take that forward, uh, they'd be happy to meet the students, depending on what position they're wanting it, etc. Uh, because of the pandemic, immediately we're not really hiring, hiring. Uh, but yes, there are some vacant positions which we are hiring as well, but uh, but not as aggressively as we used to. That's the only submission. But otherwise, yes, um, I think the only submission. But otherwise, all, we're also open for internships as well. So we'd be happy to consider that. And I'll share those details. And take it. Excellent. I shall take it forward. And uh, now there's this last question that uh, uh, Pinky would like to ask, after which we've also got uh, Devakar. Devakar is the Dean of Jargon Lake City University. And uh, he would want to thank you on behalf of uh, Jargon, uh, our school, <laughs> that is Jargon <laughs> Risk of Mime School of Entertainment and Events. So over to you, Arjay uh, Pinky in the house. Come on. Let's like uh, have some fun. So, uh, Pinky, what one question uh, that you have? And yeah. uh, Nisha, with your permission, this question will later be edited and shared on um, uh, on um, Lake City Voice. I hope that's sure. okay. Sure, yeah? sure, sure. Okay, sure. Yeah. So I would just want to ask you, you know, any one experience throughout your radio career. So we get to meet so many people, and there are so many stories that touch our heart. But that one single story that, you know, is, is here forever with you. If you can share that with us and then your endorsement uh, for Lake City Voice, that, that's the only thing. You know, I, I might sound very boring and this, is, this may not be the answer that you would expect. But uh, I've been with radio for, I mean, of course, I've dabbled with television and, and radio and film direction and stuff like that. But radio has been there with me for the last 30 years. And uh, Pinky, to be very honest, uh, every third day or fourth day, there are instances that happen which really stay with you forever. And I really cannot point any one story in radio which, which, is, which has stayed with me forever because it happens every single day because we're talking to people. We're talking to real people. Right. And we are so, so from, from, uh, you know, stopping somebody from doing a suicide in the middle of the night to finding, um, you know, somebody lost their puppy and she was crying. This kid was crying for year, you know, for, for months on end because you, anybody who's a dog lover could relate to that. So finding that puppy for the little kid to making a difference in somebody's life who, who, who's not getting a football to play because they didn't have the money to, to buy a football, you know, somebody from a, from a uh, 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 from a family who couldn't who can get any facilities. So many stories, Pinky. I mean, we really can't cannot cannot pinpoint that. Um, so, for me, the reason I've been with radio for such a long time is the fact that every day is an experience. Every day you hear stories about real people, and that is what has made all the difference. And that's the joy of being in radio. So that's that's uh, the other. That's that's what I need to really um, say. As far as the Jagaran uh, Lake City University is concerned, I'm really happy that there are so many students who are interested in radio, and they're not asking digital questions and not asking, "Will radio ever survive?" Um, it is all I all I feel is that the the space of radio and audio is here to stay. You don't need to look at yourselves as radio, but the power of voice is very, very important. You can take it on digital, you can take it on the satellite radio, you can take it on the, on the terrestrial radio, it doesn't matter. But the power of voice is something which, is, which, which will be here to stay. And, and uh, it's really heartening to see so many and hear so many questions, which I was happy to answer. So thank you. And, and, um, and you must look at, at radio also as a very strong career option. It's not always television or it's not always digital radio. In fact, sometimes I can even say, I say it very candidly that radio sometimes pays a lot more than television as well. So, so uh, yes, so, you know, it's not that salaries, salaries are, are very compromised on radio. No, it's not like that at all. And it is a good career. The only thing I keep saying is that you need to be aware of what is happening around you. You need to be passionate about it, etc. But if you are any of those, then you're here to stay. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Thank you.
Thank you, Nisha. And um, uh, over to uh, uh, Professor Devaka Shukla. Uh, Professor, please, if you could. Um, uh, uh, thank I you. I can't see you. Yeah, here you are. Okay. Thank you. I, so I couldn't much, see you. Uh, Thank you so much, Sushma. And uh, you know, why I've been hearing Nisha, it's, it's such an amazing. And I remember, uh, you know, you had asked me that I should be moderating in your place initially when we were trying to set up uh, this session. And I'm, I'm, I'm regretting the fact that why did I not moderate? Because such an amazing session that we had and uh, an outstanding Nisha, because uh, uh, you have such a distinctive, uh, you know, kind of experience, uh, not just about uh, radio, but across the, the entire media scene. And I was so happy when, uh, you know, you were just while responding to the questions you talked about social impact, because that is personally very close to me. And I, I, I firmly believe uh, having worked in the sector as well, I, I feel that, you know, many times uh, media spaces, whether it is television or, or radio, or anything, we often end up only talking about the, you know, the fun side of it or the entertainment side of it, or, you know, becoming so, so glamorous about it at times. But uh, really, people do realize the amount of impact uh, such platforms make. Uh, so that's something which is very, very important that you told this. Friends. I also caught on to this. Again, another thing we should talk about, you know, being, being a great, uh, you know, understand who the listeners are or audiences are and, and getting the insights because ideas only work, according to me, is if you have a great insights backing those particular ideas. And then how do you execute it? That's another piece of advice. And I know that as faculty, we keep on telling our students, coming from you is, is an amazing thing. Passion, absolutely. I mean, resourcefulness. I was, Nisha, telling somebody yesterday and, and one of our group of students had asked us, uh, in case if I have to be in advertising and public relations industry, what should I need? Even internship. So I, I gave a very, very, you know, commonsensical answer. Hamnik said, if I was hiring, what do I look for? I do not look for the greatest strategic knowledge that I want. I need somebody to come and walk up to me saying, Devakar, you please go home. You will have a presentation ready tomorrow morning. That's a resourcefulness that I want, even if you make a mistake. So I think amazing thing that you said about passion and top it all was this collaboration. I mean, I think we can keep on talking about this collaboration, teammanship. That's amazing thing. We also have some you know, subjects, Nisha, and what we have said is we don't call it as a subject course. We just call it as a collaborative unit. The whole point is to just check the collaborative quotient top strengths because that's what they would need. I thoroughly enjoyed your session. Uh, it's amazing too that you gave us so much time and thanks to Sushma and Vishra of MIME as well. We're trying to do something very unique in Central India. And as Sabas and Sushma keeps on saying, it's not about Central India, but about India per se. And I'm pretty sure that uh, even whenever, you know, the industry is up to hiring people, and these students apply in an open way, uh, in an independent way, uh, they would stand up and impress uh, the recruiters uh, on based on the merit part of it. And that's what would give us the maximum happiness. But I'm sure that we'll take away a lot of things from this particular session. I did it personally. So thank you so much. I just pray that, uh, you know, uh, this travel and all becomes easier for everyone. And uh, between me and Sushma, we get you down to the campus. You love this campus. Uh, uh, it's it's an amazing campus. I'm sure Sushma would have shared the kind of production studios you have. I mean, we have out here. It's something that, uh, you know, as Red FM, which is a very, very good... Uh, and, and by the way, uh, Nisha, uh, Red FM um, is extremely close to our university in terms of collaboration, uh, you know, at the local level I'm talking about, so station managers and also that's something very unique. I must thank you again for spending time and uh, really look forward to meeting you at some point of time. Thank you so much, Sushma. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Devakar. Very, very, I really enjoyed uh, being, uh, you know, so I, I, I also feel one of the things I wanted to mention, Devakar, is that these conversations and these experiential sessions that you are doing, I think is very important for the, for the students because not everything is theory. And often what happens is anybody we hire sometimes, um, especially who's just come out of a media school, we tell them, okay, now you might want to unlearn some of the okay. things and start afresh because every company, every brand has its own thought processes, etc. So when they meet different people from different walks of life and different industries within the media space, I think they, they also uh, develop certain thought processes which, which, and, and they get exposed to it, which is really, really good. So I'm, I'm glad you're doing this session. Thank and you. I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nisha. Anisha, I'd request you if you could please give us a little bite uh, for, uh, for our school. I've, I've uh, 
sent it to you in DM on the chat. It's uh, Jagran Vistrop Mind School of Entertainment and Events. Uh, if okay. you could please, like a short bite, um, talking about good things about it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I can, I can send that separately, right? Uh, yeah, you can, or you yeah. can do it right now. If it's fine, you can just do it now and then I'll edit it out. Whatever, I'll, just, I'll, just send, I'll, I'll, I'll send it across. And we really appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much, Nisha. And your, uh, you know, on behalf of Sabas, uh, 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 Divakar, they, all the students here, a big thank you. I thank know you so today much. you've got a lot of work and you've taken this time, so we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here, and all the best to all the students. Thank, thank you, you for being.